them. How make a rhyme? Atlantic rollers bursting in my ears and peeling church bells and the puff of trains, the sight of sailing clouds, the smell of grass were always calling out to me for words. I caught at them and missed and missed again. Catch hold, my father said, catch hold like this, trying to teach me how to carpenter. Not that way, boy, when will you ever learn? I dug the chisel deep into my hand. Shoot, said my father, helping with my gun and aiming at the rabbit. Quick, boy, fire. But I had not released the safety catch. I was a poet. That was why I failed. My faith in this chimera brought an end to all my father's hopes. In later years, now old and ill, he asked me once again to carry on the firm. I still refused. And now, when I behold fresh published, new, a further volume of my verse, I see his kind gray eyes look woundedly at mine. I see his workmen seeking other jobs, and that red granite obelisk that marks the family grave in Highgate Cemetery points an accusing finger to the sky. <laughs> oh, Peggy Puri Cust, how pure you were, my first and purest love, Miss Puri Cust. Satchel on back, I hurried up West Hill to catch you on your morning walk to school, your nanny with you and your golden hair streaming like sunlight. Strict deportment made you hold yourself erect and every step bounced up and down as though you walked on springs. Your ice blue eyes, your lashes long and light, your sweetly freckled face and turned up nose so haunted me that all my loves since then have had a look of Peggy Puri cast. Wendy you were to me in Peter Pan, the little match girl in Hans Anderson, but I would rescue you before you died. And once you asked me to your house to tea. It seemed a palace after 31, the lofty entrance hall, the flights of stairs, the huge expanse of sunny drawing room. And there your mother from a sofa smiled. After that tea, I called and called again. But Peggy was not in. She was away. She wasn't well. Up West Hill, I walked, red-capped and jacketed to school, a new boy much too early, school at nine, and here was I outside at half-past eight. Walking from school is a consummate art. Which routes to follow to avoid the gangs, which paths to find that lead circuitous to leafy squirrel haunts, and plopping ponds for dreams of Archibald and Tiger Tim. Which hiding place is safe and when it is? What time to leave to dodge the enemy? I only once was trapped. I knew the trap. I heard it in their tones. Walk back with us. I knew they weren't my friends. 
But that soft voice wheedled me from my route to Cold Swain's Lane. There, in a holly bush, they threw me down, pulled off my shorts and laughed and ran away. And as I struggled up, I saw grey brick, the cemetery railings and the tombs. Betjeman's a German spy. Shoot him down and let him die. Betjeman's a German spy, a German spy, a German spy. Time shows the small fields waiting, every hawthorn hedge straining inland before the southwest gale. Can it really be that this same carriage came from Waterloo? On Wade Bridge Station, what a breath of sea scented the Camel Valley. Cornish air, soft Cornish rains, and silence after steam, as out of Derry's stable came the brake to drag us up those long familiar hills, past haunted woods and oil-lit farms, and on to far Tribetherick by the sounding sea. Then, safe in bed, I watched the long-legged fly with red transparent body tap the walls and fizzle in the candle flame and drag its poisonous-looking abdomen away to somewhere out of sight and out of mind, while through the open window came the roar of full Atlantic rollers on the beach. Then, before breakfast, down towards the sea, I ran alone, monarch of miles of sand, its shining stretches satin smooth and veined. I felt beneath bare feet the lugworm casts, and walked where only gulls and oyster catchers had stepped before me to the water's edge. The morning tide flowed in to welcome me. The fan-shaped scallop shells, the backs of crabs, the bits of driftwood worn to reptile shapes, the heaps of bladderwrack the tide had left, which lifted up, sent sandhoppers to leap in hundreds round me, answered, welcome back. Bright as the morning sea, those early days, 
Though there were tears and sand thrown in my eyes and punishments and smells of Macintosh, long barefoot climbs to fetch the morning milk, terrors from hissing geese and angry shouts, slammed doors and waitings and a sense of dread, still warm as shallow sea pools in the sun and welcoming to me the girls and boys.